it's time. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to my guide for Innovative Ordnance Mercenary. If you're looking for the Commando Guide, that is coming very soon. Once it's up, I'll link it in the description below once I bother leveling a Commando. So here's the basics of what you need to know for your stats for Innovative Ordnance. If you come to your character screen and click on the Details tab here, it's going to give you a list of what your accuracy, alacrity, and critical is. For our accuracy, we want to be getting these up to about 110% for PvE. This is going to make sure you're not missing any of your abilities. For PvP, you can actually drop this down to like 105%, and some people run with no accuracy whatsoever. It's completely up to you. For our alacrity, we want to be getting this up to about 7.2%. 7.15 is roughly the exact number, but given latency, usually you want to put that up a little bit further than that. Then dump the rest into critical. Now, a lot of our stats are going to be squished right now because, well, frankly, not everyone has a lot of gear. Um, so be aware that you want to hit those accuracy and alacrity thresholds first and then dump the rest into crit. For our tactical item, we're going to be using the Energized Charges Tactical in most situations except for extreme AoE content. Energized Charges turns our supercharged burn into a super dot, which is very good for us. Additionally, for our legendaries, we're going to be using the Concentrated Fire Package Concentrated fire means that every time we use supercharged gas, we're going to get a free crit on our mag shot, especially with our crits so low right now. This is going to be very important. And then finally, our random charge package for our second uh, tactical or our second legendary here, which is going to mean that every time you deal damage or heal an enemy or an ally, you're going to have a 10% chance to grant a stack of supercharge. Especially when combined with this energized charge tactical, this is going to be giving us a whole lot more damage over time. Speaking of damage over time, IO is a damage over time spec, which means we're going to be applying a lot of abilities to the target. It's going to build down. It's more of a death by a thousand cuts than a burst spec. However, we do have some uh, burst, burst, blah, 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 burst built into the rotation. So before we hop into the actual rotation itself, we're going to talk about the combat um, ability tree here. Now, I wish there was a simple answer to give you for a lot of these. So let's walk through the basics of some of your decisions here, and I'll tell you what I take. In the first decision tree here, you have Eruptive Flames, which is great for multiple targets being ticked on at once. So if you have a heavy AoE fight, it might be worth it. However, Incendiary Ignition is what I mostly run with. This is going to give you more flame eruptions on the target every time you do damage with your flame abilities, which is uh, very handy. Additionally, Volatile Cinders is great for solo content. This is going to be more of your burst. So you have your AoE option here with Eruptive Flames. You have your single target extended sustained damage with incendiary ignition, and then you have your burst uh, option with volatile cinders. For those of you that are leveling, volatile cinders is probably gonna be the way to go. Uh, we'll explain why in a little bit. In the second row, I personally run with power barrier. If you have a lot of AOE, you can take sticky dart, but for me, I like the passive DR more than anything else. In the next choice here, impact explosives is nice for straight burst damage, but giving my testing, it looks like slow burn is going to be the superior single target option at the moment. If you have lots of AOE, or if you're in like a, a war zone that has a lot of AOE going on, you can go with these heavy shrapnel options. So again, it's more of a single target with slow burn uh, or the heavy shrapnel option for AOE. Up here, I take Chafe Flare. Chafe Flare is going to be your defensive cooldown. Uh, supercharged Clarity is nice for like healers, but for us, eh, we'd rather get our single target damage off because we're all about us, not about our raid team. Power Overrides is okay, uh, but I'd much rather have a DCD in the form of Chafe Flare. We'll talk about the defensive cooldowns in a little bit. Moving down the line, down the line Energy Rebounder is pretty much the only option here. The other options are kind of dookie, like Improved Vents is eh, and then Jet Escape also eh. These are uh, okay, but the survivability provided by Energy Rebounder is light years beyond what everyone else is providing. Now, Power Shield is the only one that we're not going to talk about in this spec. Uh, it's kind of dookie compared to the other two. For PvE players, I'd recommend Thrill of the Hunt. It allows your unload to be used on the move, which is very, very nice, uh, especially when you want to be getting out of those mechanics. But for the PvP players, you're probably going to want to take Culto Surge. Culto Surge allows you to heal your Culto up to 60% and then doubles the healing rate. Uh, so it's very, very useful to us, more useful than Throw the Hunt. However, if you're not being focused frequently, it might be worth it for you to take Throw the Hunt. Or if you're just playing Rex PvP and you want to be moving around more, totally fine, up to you. Uh, a lot of these decisions are going to be, frankly, up to you. Another option of the, like, am I getting tunneled or am I free casting is going to be this next tier between Hydraulic Overrides and uh, Reflect. Personally, I get tunneled a lot because 
I'm a streamer and then people see the gold flare and they want to tunnel me. Uh, so I reuse responsive safeguards, but I've seen a lot of people use hydraulic overrides and or electro dart. It's really up to your personal preference. For you PV ears, if you can cheese with, with responsive safeguards, you might as well take it. Otherwise, the small speed boost provided by hydraulic overrides is very nice. Finally, we have the option between trauma regulators, uh, gyroscopic alignment jets, and afterburners. This one is kind of dealer's choice. Uh, some people are going to say, oh, I need the route for afterburners, et cetera, et cetera. For me, I prefer the healing provided by trauma regulators. Uh, or if you're getting stunned a lot, you could use gyroscopic alignment jets. For the most part, the default option is going to be trauma regs. But if you run into an option where like, hey, I want to be rooting targets more, or if you're going to be stunned a lot in the counter, uh, you might want to check those gyroscopic alignment jets. It's really dealer's choice, but I personally go with trauma regulators. Okay, that's all the boring stuff out of the way. This is what I run personally when I'm doing PvP. I run uh, incendiary ignition, power barrier, slow burn, chafe flare, energy rebounder, cultal surge, responsive stage guards, and trauma regulators. You're gonna see we take a lot of defensive utilities here just because I get tunneled a lot. It's my personal preference. However, the general overall single target rotation is going to be remain relatively the same for everyone doing this spec. All right, now let's talk about the fun part of playing a DPS, which is actually doing damage. IO is a dot spec, which means that we focus on doing damage over time abilities. And the very important, most important ability of all here during IO is our little glowing ability here called Supercharged Gas. What Supercharged Gas does is it takes these 10 stacks of Supercharge, you can see over here in our buff tray, and it converts it uh, into Supercharged Gas, which means you're going to vent 10 heat and then all of your damage over time abilities are going to be doing 10% extra damage during the window that it's on. So if you see here, we apply our dots to the target and then hit our supercharged gas. Now we have the buff of our dots doing more damage. And then the next time you hit the target, it's going to be applying the stack of supercharged burn, which does a boatload of damage. So the entire uh, point of playing IO is to build a lot of stacks of supercharge, have your dots taking on the target at all times, and then be smashing that supercharge gas button as much as possible. But how do we do that effectively? Well, I'm glad you asked me. We're gonna follow a very basic rotation. Here's how it's gonna work. It's broken down into three sections. The first is our dot section. The second is our fuff section. And the third is our bonk section. So. Let's talk about the first section first, which is our dots. Dots are broken down into our incendiary, into our incendiary missile and then our serrated shot. When we are in the middle of our rotation, we wanna be using incendiary missile first and then our serrated shot second because this gives us time between the initial cast of incendiary missile and our serrated shot to let our heat dissipate. You can see here, even when used back to back, we've only generated 15 heat over the course of this entire two GCD section, which is gonna be very nice in terms of managing our heat. That's the basic of this opening rotation, is just incendiary missile and then serrated shot. Next comes FUF. FUF stands for filler, unload, filler. Now our fillers are broken down into a couple different sections here. The first filler and most important is gonna be our rapid shots. Rapid shots don't do anything special. It applies our regular burning buff here, but it builds a stack of supercharge, which means that if we do rapid shots, unload rapid shots, we'll be building at least two stacks of supercharge every time we go through the rotation, which as we discussed is very important. It also generates no heat, which means we're gonna be heat negative. It's very, very handy. The most important dot or filler of all is going to be our Electronet. Electronet does oodles of boogles of damage to the target. It is our most important filler. So every time Electronet is not on the target and you have a filler unload filler available, use Electronet. Those are the two most basic fillers. Electronut has a minute and 30 second cooldown, so it's gonna be very, very uncommon that you use this. However, uh, when you have filler unload filler, Use Electronet whenever it's available. That's the most basic rotation. So let's walk through that one more time while we're sitting here. So the opener, dot, incendiary missile into serrated shot. Then we go into filler, in this case, rapid shot, unload, filler. That's the second half of the rotation, very straightforward. The third half of the rotation is gonna be thermal detonator into mag shot, into power shot, into mag shot. Here's why this is important. 
When you apply thermal detonator to the target, it's going to actually tick over time until you use power shot on the target. Boop, power shot as will detonate your thermal detonator, give you a nice chunk of burst damage. Power shot also grants you this little buff here called speed to burn, which means that you can use power shot for free and instantaneously. And then you can use uh, mag shot once again. You're gonna notice here that every time I'm using power shot and unload in this rotation, mag shot will start to glow. This is because we have the benefit of, let's show it one more time, so oh, it's gonna be evading. So do to do thermal detonator, mag shot, power shot, we've gotten this buff of uh, innovative particle accelerator, which means it's gonna generate no heat for rail shot. You just smash that rail sh or mag shot button again. That's it. Those are the three phases of doing damage as a innovative ordnance mercenary. So again, the bonk section of a rotation, one more time in case you missed it, is going to be thermal detonator, mag shot, power shot, mag shot. Then you start over from the beginning. So again, open rotation, dots, dot, dot. Now we enter the filler unload filler. So filler, unload. You can see our electronets off cooldown. So filler, huzzah, into our bonk, thermal detonator, mag shot, power shot, mag shot. From the beginning, dot, dot, filler, unload. Wait for the finish. Filler, thermal detonator. Mag shot, power shot, mag shot, dot, dot, fuff, unload, wait for the finish, fuff, thermal dead, mag shot, power shot, mag shot. If you can do this rotation until your fingers bleed, you will be perfectly happy and be doing perfectly adequate damage. You're also never gonna run out of heat, which is very, very important, because if you screw up your heat, you're gonna be sitting there for a while. If you do screw up your heat, if by some miracle you're sitting over here and you're casting like missile blast, missile blast, missile blast, missile blast, and you find yourself at like 75 heat up here, this is obviously not good. So what we have here is our vent heat option. What vent heat does is it, it causes your next ability to generate no heat, and then it vents 50 heat after using that ability. The best ability to use our vent heat on is gonna be our unload. This is because unload casts over three seconds, which means that's three full seconds of not generating any heat, and then it dumps 50 heat afterwards. So if you do manage to screw everything up, try to use your vent heat into your unload. Again, let's just walk through it one more time, just in case. Remember, every time your gas is glowing, smash that gas icon, okay? So dot, dot, smash that gas icon. Filler, unload, filler, thermal debt, bonk, bonk, bonk. If you can hit this until your fingers bleed, the goal is to not be thinking about your rotation. I can sit here and talk with you guys for hours and hours and hours and never once think about what buttons I'm pushing because I have burned this into my brain and no longer have to think about it. Kind of fantastic. Now, IO's primary uh, dot spread comes from our fusion missile. When I say primary, it is our only way to dot spread, which is kind of unfortunate. However, how fusion missile works is that if you hit the target with your dots and then you fusion missile the target, every other uh, enemy in the area that is hit by your fusion missile will spread all the dots on the target to the other players in the area. Kind of a shame that that's our primary form of dot spreading, but that's okay. We have another option here in Death From Above. Uh, Death From Above does about 30,000 damage over the course of the cast, and it costs a extreme amount of heat, which is kind of unfortunate. However, it's also the coolest ability in the game. I mean, just look at it. So if you have a lot of droids or a lot of ads sitting on a target, feel free to use that Death From Above button. It does a lot of AOE damage, and it just looks cool, which you can't beat looking cool. Now, when we reach the burn phase on the target, I'm gonna give them the uh, target. Oh, I appear to have forgotten to buy the 1000. Okay, so we're gonna come here and quickly relearn what it means to do a burn phase on the target. When we are in burn phase, a couple things gonna be happening for us. If you look here, every time, oh, let me see if I can find it real quick. Boom, 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 boom. Yes, here it is, Relentless Ordinance. So every time the target reaches below 30% health, all of your uh, elemental attacks will do, uh, I'm sorry, 
all of your dots will do 30% more damage to targets under 30% health, which means that you naturally have a burn phase when you are uh, engaged in PvP or in combat. So you can see here when I reach below 30% on this dummy, sorry, we just do our basic rotation here, boop, 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 all of our abilities will start to do 30% more damage if they are damaged over time. Additionally, you're gonna see that this missile blast is starting to start, light, start to light up. This is because when you deal damage on a target with your dots, you have a chance to proc missile blast as a kind of a executability when you're in the burn phase. Missile blast glowing is one of our filler abilities. So we talked about filler unload filler. Usually it's rapid shots or it's electro net. However, in this specific situation, when missile blast is glowing, missile blast becomes one of your fillers. So you really have three fillers to worry about. Rapid shots, electro net, and then missile blast when it's glowing, but that's only in burn phase. That's kind of it. That's kind of it when it comes to IO. Again, it's a very basic rotation. Just sit down, play it to your fingers bleed. No dot dot, filler, unload filler with your three fillers being rapid shots at the bottom and then electro net in the middle and then glowing missile blast at the top. Those are priorities, so I'm sorry. That was probably very confusing. The most important of the fillers is gonna be glowing missile blast. The second most important is Electronet. The third most important is Rapid Shots. If you're just hitting Rapid Shots every time for right now until you learn the spec, totally fine. Don't worry about it. Just hit Electronet when you kind of feel like it. Then finally, into our bonk of Thermodetonator, Mag Shot, Power Shot, Mag Shot. Let's talk about a quick opener here while we uh, wrap up this uh, conversation about IO. The opener for IO is relatively simple. Whereas we usually go incendiary missile into straight shot, the actual opener is gonna go straight shot into an incendiary missile. That, time, that way you have the extra one and a half seconds to prep and pull at the same time as your tank coach, which is really nice. And then you apply both your dots at once. Once we apply both of our dots to the target, so we're gonna go straight shots, incendiary missile, we're going to pop our supercharged gas and then your uh, adrenal if you have it. And then you're gonna go mag shot, unload, electronet, and then into your normal rotation. So the reason that we're doing this is because mag shots cooldown will reset when we use unload, as we discussed previously. And then we're gonna go, so we're gonna go straight to shot, incinerating missile, supercharged gas, mag shot, unload, electronet into our usual rotation. So let's demonstrate that real quick. If you have a, uh, if you have an adrenal, you're free, free to use it here. So straight to shot, incinerating missile into mag shot, unload, electronet, and then into your usual rotation, and then just do this to the boss is dead or until you die, which is very, very sad. Let's quickly talk about our defensive cooldowns one last time before we wrap up. Uh, the primary defensive cooldown that we have is gonna be an energy shield. Energy shield gives us 25% damage reduction for 12 seconds. It has, it says it has a two minute cooldown, but because of the energy rebound or utility that we're taking, that could get down to like a minute cooldown. Additionally, every time you're attacked while under energy rebound or while under energy shield, if you are taking the trauma regulators, you're gonna be building a stack of trauma regulation, which is gonna heal you for 4% every stack. Essentially, just once it expires, you'll heal for uh, a little bit of health, which is kind of nice. Secondly, we have our uh, chafe flare, which we take in the tree over here. This is gonna pretty much be taken every single time. Chafe flare will absorb, will, will grant you two charges of decoy, which will absorb force and tech attacks. So yellow attacks, so if you see like a sage casting on you or a grenade taking in your bar, it's a force or a tech attack, you can absorb it. Additionally, it gives you, I think it's 35% uh, defense chance. So it's a great DCD, has a 45 second cooldown, very, very handy for us. Cultal Surge is the Cultal Surge it always was. It has three minute cooldown. And then if you drop below 35% or 35 health, smash that Cultal Surge button. And given the utilities that we're taking up here, it's gonna heal us up to 60% relatively quickly, um, or it's gonna heal you up to 35% if you are taking thr Thrill of the Hunt. Wow, I can't talk right now, unfortunate. And then finally, we have our Responsive Safeguards. Responsive Safeguards reflects 50% of the tar damage back to the target. And then every time you are attacked with single target damage, you heal 5% of your health. Those are the basic defensive cooldowns. Uh, please pop them accordingly. Do not pop them all at once. The goal is to be popping them one at a time. If you pop your cult, though, shield, reflect, and chafe flare all at once, I'm gonna corrupt myself, and I'm gonna throw you into the ocean. So please do not pop all your defensive cooldowns at the same time. Pop them one at a time, port for four. And that's it.
If you can do that rotation until your fingers bleed, you'll be able to play IO at a relatively decent level. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. I'll also be doing a different version of this for the Commando once I have a Commando level. That's kind of the holdup right now. Other than that, that's all I got. And take care now, guys. Peace.